When this old man, Lucien, became lonely and heartbroken, he found solace in his employee's love. She was like a dream come true. However, a few minutes before dying, he discovered a terrible secret and regretted everything he shared with her. Lucien and his wife were childhood lovers and they worked their way to the top. However, their path to success was filled with pain, frustration and regrets, yet nothing tore them apart. These two, now in their late 60s, enjoyed the fruits of their hard labor. They traveled around the world and lived a life of luxury. They offered assistance to many homeless kids and charity organizations. The duo lived with their staff in a multi-million dollar mansion. What about kids, you may ask? Sadly, this couple had none. They had difficulties producing a child and after many years trying, they gave up. Despite not having kids, they were happy and content. You see, although this couple were in their late 60s, they looked like they were in their early 40s. Isn't that what being in love with the right person can do to someone? Unfortunately, after years of living in good health and joy, this couple's beautiful world crumbled to pieces one morning. That morning, while sipping tea and holding hands, the two took a stroll around their mansion. After walking for a few minutes, Alice complained that she was feeling dizzy. Let's walk to the chair over there. Once you sit down, you'll be fine, Lucien said and placed his arms around his wife. But just they were about to have their seats, Alice let out a sharp cry. Then she clenched her chest and passed out. The next time she opened her eyes, she was in the hospital and the doctors were attending to her. Unfortunately, they couldn't get a diagnosis. Do everything in your power to save my wife. Name your price and I will double it. She's my life. Save her. Lucien told the doctors in a trembling voice. Sadly, they told them there was nothing they could do. So Lucien took his wife home. He asked his most trusted employee, Monique, to look after her while he went in search of doctors who could save her. Three weeks later, Lucien joined his wife on their bed and lovingly caressed her hair. We will live for many years and die together when we're 100. So don't leave me alone, okay? I will be so frightened without you. Lucien said as tears streamed down his eyes. Then he kissed his wife's forehead, wrapped his arms around her and said, Good night, my love. Unfortunately, Alice didn't wake up the next morning. She died in her sleep. Alice's death shattered Lucien's heart. He refused to come out of his room. He sat on his bed all day and pulled out his hair. He felt an emptiness deep within his soul. During this time, Monique looked after Lucien. She was deeply sorry for her boss and did everything in her power to make him feel better. She cooked his favorite meals and fed him. In the evenings, Monique took Lucien out for strolls and when they returned, she'd sing songs for him. Her voice was so soothing that Lucien, who found it difficult to sleep, started dozing off within a few minutes. Soon enough, Monique earned Lucien's trust and he shared everything with her. Sometimes he would even cry in her presence and she would gently pat his shoulders. I'm right here. Everything will be fine. I'm with you," she would say and smile. With Monique by his side, Lucien felt alive and he regained his appetite. He enjoyed Monique's presence and she made him laugh a lot. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that Lucien fell in love with Monique. And tell you what, he loved her like a teenager falling in love for the first time. It was innocent, real and passionate. Not long after, the two started a romantic relationship. I promise to give my love, loyalty and my life to you, Monique said one night before kissing Lucien. The couple went on numerous trips and shared beautiful memories. But just when Lucien was glad that things were finally falling into place, another tragedy struck. One morning while Lucien was taking a stroll with Monique in the garden, he became dizzy and passed out. Just like in Alice's case, the doctors also failed to come up with a diagnosis and Lucien was discharged. Once home, Monique, while shedding tears, took care of Lucien. She gave him his medications and stayed up all night to look after him. Two weeks later, Lucien's condition got so bad that he started coughing profusely. In a raspy voice, he told Monique, My love, hurry now. Go to the lawyer and tell him to come right away. Monique did as she was told and within an hour, the lawyer arrived and had a private discussion with Lucien. When they were done, the lawyer summoned Monique to the room. Monique was so confused and she wondered what was going on. Why were there so many documents on the table? Why would they need her presence in such a formal meeting? 
Just then, the lawyer explained everything to her. Since Lucien had no kids, he chose Monique to inherit his enormous fortune. The lawyer gave Monique a pen and asked her to sign a document, but Monique refused. Instead, she fell to her knees and wept bitterly. My love, you don't need to do this. Are you planning to leave me alone in this world? Keep fighting. You will survive. I won't sign it, she cried. After much persuasion from Lucien and the lawyer, Monique finally signed the document with tears in her eyes. A few weeks after this, Lucien regained his energy. He became strong enough to take walks in the garden and he even ate by himself. Monique, of course, was thrilled. I told you that you would survive, she said and kissed his forehead. Unfortunately, this joy didn't last long. Two weeks later, Lucien relapsed and this time his condition was critical. I don't think I'm going to make it. I think it's time to join my beloved Alice in heaven, Lucien told his staff. The employees were devastated but unbeknownst to them, a shocking revelation awaited them. The following week, the doctor visited the house and told Lucien that he had only a few weeks to live. Afterward, Lucien instructed his employees to start dressing in black and to begin his funeral preparations. Some days later, Lucien started coughing profusely and it seemed as if he would die sooner than the doctor expected. Lucien asked Monique to invite the lawyer and the doctor over to the house. When they were all gathered in the room, Lucien told the lawyer to go ahead and make the preparations to transfer his fortune to Monique. A few minutes later, something scary happened. All of a sudden, Lucien started gasping. Monique rushed to his side and cupped his face. My love, don't do this, stay with me, she said, but Lucien continued gasping as if he was about to die. Just then, Lucien turned to Monique and in a raspy voice he said, Make me a cup of tea the same one you gave my wife. He also asked her to gather the rest of the staff in his room so he could give them his final words. Without hesitation, Monique got up and returned with the cup of tea. Within three minutes, all the staff also gathered in Lucien's room. Just as Monique was about to give Lucien the cup of tea, he stopped her. Is this the same tea you gave to my wife? He asked in a thunderous voice. Yes, Monique said nervously. Lucien asked her again, and this time Monique's hand began to tremble. Lucien suddenly sat up and fiercely grabbed Monique's hand. Your secret is out. Do you think you can kill me just like you killed my wife? Lucien yelled. All the staff was shocked. How did the dying man suddenly have so much strength? You see, a few weeks ago when the doctor visited Lucien, he had noticed the weird color of his teeth. So, he took some along with him and after examining it, he found that it was filled with poison. The doctor gave Lucien the antidote and instructed him to stop taking the tea. Lucien knew who the culprit was right away. He knew it was Monique because she was the only one who prepared the tea. After taking the antidote, Lucien pretended to be sick just to see how far Monique was willing to go. Just as he and the doctor suspected, Monique continued bringing the poisonous tea to his room but Lucien never drank it, instead he flushed it down the toilet. Realizing that her game was up, Monique fell to her knees and apologized while shedding tears. But why would an employee try to take the life of her employer? Monique later confessed that she was jealous of Lucien and his wife. She felt they had already achieved a lot in their life and since they were old, they had nothing else to live for. Isn't that just crazy? Monique eventually faced the law which sentenced her to spend a good number of years in prison. After Monique was sentenced to prison, Lucien went to his wife's grave and apologized for everything. No one can ever take your place and I will always love you, he said and placed her favorite flowers on the grave. What do you think about Monique's reason for the evil acts she committed in this story? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section. See you in the next video.